I can imagine, Rex, the people at home saying, you idiots have spent 25 minutes talking about uh, how the how the preparations have been undergoing, uh, the, the Masters Chairman's uh, press conference. Will you idiots please just get to the favorites, players to watch, players you do not think will perform well? I think, Rex, we have we to start that? with what I thought was a little bit of a surprise. The Masters, this is as close as you can possibly get to a super group. Barring a delay at 1042 uh, a.m. Eastern time on Thursday, you will see world number one, Scotty Scheffler. You will see Roy McIlroy, the world number two, and you will see Xander Schauffele, who a lot of people are pegging uh, to capture his first major championship this week and also inside the top 10 uh, in the world ranking. Are you a little bit surprised to see those three players in the same group? And who do you think it helps and who do you think it hurts? Uh, I don't think it hurts any of them, to be honest with you, because it seems to me they they all seem to be friendly enough. If they're not friends, then they're friendly enough. There's not going to be any tension above and beyond playing the first round of the Masters. I don't see that being a problem. It, you're at Augusta, so there was going to be big crowds. If if Rory was paired with you and I, the crowds would still be massive because everyone is still there to watch Rory. So I don't think that's going to be that big of a difference. I will say logistically, and I have spoken with people here where they do try to sort of space all that out. And the idea being that because there's really no waves, you don't technically have a wave. You just have one wave of people heading out off the first tee. They, they try to not have groups, at least marquee groups, that close together. Because the way it's been described to me is you, if you do that, then what happens as those groups go around and the patrons are following that one group, and it was, it was quoted to me, they were like locusts. They eat up everything, they drink up everything, they buy up everything they can get their hands on, and they keep moving on. So they try to space out those groups as much as possible. That surprises me a little bit, but uh, I'm just going to touch on the first part. I can't imagine they tee off on time. Uh, yeah, they're not going to tee off on time. But even if they go out at, at 3 o'clock, I think it could be absolute mayhem. Yeah. Anyone who has ever attended the Masters knows you cannot follow a group for all 18 holes. You know, It's not like you can just kind of plod your way around the golf course and watch every single shot. Like It doesn't operate that way, uh, but particularly uh, for a super group like that, uh, it, it could be absolute mayhem out there. I actually think, Rex, it's not going to hurt Scotty. It's not going to hurt Xander. I actually think it could help Roy McIlroy. When you look at uh, his recent history, uh, certainly over the over the past five years, what has really dogged him or plagued him has been slow starts. You look at his scoring average over the past five Masters, it's 73.8. And when you look at the history of this tournament and the fact that the past 18 Masters champions all have been T11 or better after the opening round, you can see where the struggles have been for Roy McIlroy. Essentially, when you look at those two stats, he's putting himself too far behind, is then playing catch-up, uh, and is it is significantly reducing the likelihood that he will go on to win the Masters. The fact that he's playing with Scotty, who is uh, on a on a different level right now, uh, putting up ball striking numbers that we have not seen since Tiger Woods, I think can help. It, it also playing with with Xander, who is who has played some phenomenal golf in twenty twenty four, despite not winning. I think it sort of sets down a marker uh, for Rory to allow him to lock in. And I think I think Scotty's style of play is is disciplined. It's patient. It takes advantage of the par fives. Uh, he scrambles well. Uh, he he doesn't make sort of any silly or sloppy mistakes. That's exactly the sort of golf that Rory McIlroy is trying to play. You talked to him last week in, in San Antonio. He said he's trying to eliminate those boneheaded mistakes. We're like, what are you doing? Like that's just an easy bogey. That's an easy double. Just play to the fat side and, and sort of add it up at the end. And all of a sudden, you got a sixty-eight or 69. I actually think it can help kind of riding alongside those two players who, who I think are, who are playing the style of golf that Rory aspires to play, particularly at Augusta national. 